Aloha, hey, it's Julie Zemelis, 365 Hawaii and 365 Hawaii team and with Keller Williams Realty. And I'm here today with Lance Owens, your resident superstar celebrity realtor <laughs> from Louisville Hi, Real guys. Estate. And uh, he's got some news for you. And <laughs> I'm gonna warn anybody who's seen this for the first time, we do have a habit of going off topic so, <laughs> so. But it usually has to do with housing and real estate so yeah. it's entertaining that's at least the big island it yes. has to do with that's, the big island yeah. okay <laughs> we okay. haven't talked since i posted that picture of the uh, weather report yet either have we uh what's the report one? Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah every day is the same every day. except you know with the wind raining behind me you wouldn't think it's every day is the same um we they said if uh, el nino hit we probably have a wetter summer and we are getting a little bit more water than yeah yeah. But we've had a wetter climate for at least two to three years now. Yeah. I'm thinking. So, yeah. no matter what name you put behind it, yeah. it has been wetter. You know, I'm telling you, because again, we're going off topic right the bat. All right. Er 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 Eric and I uh, moved into a, uh, uh, an elevation rental uh, down the street from this house. Um, and the day we moved in, it was June 1st, 2019. Mm -hmm. It started to rain mm -hmm. and it didn't stop. It, when we moved into that property, everything was dead. Within a very short amount of time, we had 12 feet freaking cane growing up. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. like that now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it's green. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, Eric and I had a theory about the uh, lack of or presence of VOG having a um, hit on what's going on with the weather. I, you know, and I've heard that. I've heard that that rumor's been going around since 2018, right? Okay, that so was it was the mess. big one. <laughs> right, <Yeah>. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, tell what it is. you didn't invent it. Go ahead, tell them. Tell them what was. What, what the theory is. Oh, oh, the thing is, is that, you know, with, with um, the particulate matter in the atmosphere because of what is thrown up from the volcano fog, um, that it actually captures um, more of the clouds, which then creates more of the rain. But uh, on the other side of this, when Eric and I first moved here in 2005, they were going through a 10-year drought, and that was also part, maybe, of the volcano. So I'm trying to figure out, is it the particulate matter that's bringing in the clouds, or is it because of fog? It causes a, um, a heat bubble a on the, a layer the between the two, and therefore it stops the rain. What have you heard? So I've heard that it changes the weather pattern uh, for sure is what people believe, mm -hmm. and that it. Uh, and you think about it. So if, you know, I always try to like apply different things to it. If you think about it, like what happens when they what they call seed clouds when they need more snow right in right? in in ski areas and yeah. things like that. Yeah. What what do they put in there? They put in something that that makes it fall. Well, they put something. It, uh, it combines I'm the. Not a weather guy, uh, yeah, I know. So. It um, it uh, pulls the water together and, and and makes the water come together to crap or, to grab around it. Uh -huh. And that's and why I was thinking. Heavy. Right, then, then it falls to the ground. Right. So with the um, the sulfur dioxide. Matter, the sulfur. Yes, that's up the in the air. It basically pulls it together and then mm -hmm. brings it down. So, so your theory could be when, right. We've had more rain when it when it stopped the volcano stopped than we did. Okay, so that's see you guys seriously. That's why you know what. Um, Lance loves, um, was that guy, Guy Haji? Yeah, Guy Haji. Yeah, <laughs> from, from Oahu. There's some great memes on him, too, uh, about when the hurricanes come. You know what, though? This was in the paper, like, at some yeah. point, saying that the weather pattern had changed and all that kind of stuff. And they didn't really pin it down, either. Is this the same paper that told us that the mountains had no effect on the weather pattern in Kona? Oh, I hope that, that wasn't we, true. That we couldn't... Um, hurricanes could hit us as easily as anybody else, and the mountains wouldn't block us. Hurricanes come... Inland, mm, you know, journalism miles. changed there too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just wondering if it was yeah. the same one. And, and just so you guys know, it's July. It's it's you know July seventh, um, and the hurricane season actually starts is. like August first in uh, in Hawaii. It started season. already. They said, it already started? Yeah, okay, yeah they so, okay. said it. It started already. We're so many days into it, and we haven't had any pattern of it. But I think the typical when it has hit is in it's usually history. in August. And I think, and the way I remember, it, and what sticks out to me is when um, on 9 11, before 9 11, mm -hmm. that we all know, 9 11 was when Iniki hit. Oh. In 93, I think it was. Yeah. If I remember. So Hurricane Iniki devastated. No, it was 92. Was it 92? Yep, it okay. was when a Jurassic Park was being filmed. So, um, and it was on 9 11. And uh, again, 9/11 wasn't an important date at that point no, in time. It wasn't. So, um, so, and they, I remember them talking about that was very late in the year for a hurricane to hit. Ah. It was within the time frame that it could, but to have such a devastating earth, earthquake, uh -huh. hurricane, hit that late in the season. Um, 
Because they'll bleed. Yeah. Because uh, Flossie and all the ones that I, th I think about is usually ones that kind of like menace Hawaii. Uh -huh. It's usually mid to late August. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's when Hurricane So August Lane. is like the hot month? Yeah, the, the hot, hot month, right? Hot yeah, the hot, hot, yeah. hot, hot thingy. And, uh, but they did say because of... Um, Need, no, uh, only know that we might get a little bit, maybe like a little bit more of an intense Longer season. Period. Yeah, so. Be interesting. We should look up. Is Brad there? Yeah. We'll is he showing up yet? Um, <laughs> Brad what, is our was resident. Was it a La Nina, a La, a La Nina or a El Nino? They happened during that time frame. During um, a her, or what you call it, Hurricane Iniki. Yeah, back in 92. Na 92, 93 area. Uh, I'm going to go with Julie. She seems pretty positive on you that. You know what? It's so funny. Again, this, we'll give Brad his little due on Instagram. We were a little I mean, late on, um, today. YouTube, right. yeah. Uh, that uh, Brad is our resident, like, you know, uh, chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, Brad, figure out the weather pattern from 1992 and get back to us on uh, what well, was a lot down in So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, of course, this has nothing to do with real estate, but it does have to do with lifestyle living in Hawaii. So uh, let's get the statistics. What are you looking at? Well, I just, you got me on chat, GPT. No, I got to go <laughs> for one little second on it. Okay. There's two things I've heard about, about chat, GPT. Um, and, you know, my buddy Mike Drutar uh, threw up one to me because uh, I was telling him my other one. But it, realtors are worried about chat, GPT replacing them, right? And so the interesting part was it'll never happen. And the reason being... A buyer would have to be able to tell ChatGPT exactly what they wanted, exactly what they were looking for, and where they wanted it. And if they have the MLS for that. No. They never. Do you ever sell them what they came in no. and said they No. No, it's wanted. so funny, you guys. This <laughs> is like, when I was like outside of the real estate industry, just kind of like in the marketing part of it, realtors would always say buyers are liars. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what does that mean? And a lot of times people come and they think that they want one thing, but they end up wanting something totally different than what they first started looking for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when uh, somebody says, I want a three bedroom, two bath, da, 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 they might end up with something totally different in a different location. Yeah? Totally. Yeah, 100%. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Kevin is stepping in in Brad's role today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. And Kevin is saying, uh, Hurricane Iniki was the most powerful hurricane to strike the Hawaii Islands in recorded history. Uh, formed on September 5th, 1992, during the strong 1990 to 95 El Nino. Ah, there we go. Okay. El Nino. Look at it. it was a uh, Niki was one no, of the, one, one of that's 11 created. central tropical cyclones during that season. Uh, during that season. Okay. And, and just it, so you guys. say what day it hit Kauai? It, it, do, it just Kevin. Says, it just says it was Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. It just says it was formed. What? Yeah, it was formed. Okay, formed. Took Especially about six days, days to get, get here. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure 9/11. And it re I remember I lived uh, on Oahu then. I went to sleep and it was like, it's going to miss you. Don't worry about it. Oh. It's going way off that way. Oh. And we went to sleep and I woke up and it was, it was insane. I woke really? up at like 5 a.m. to get ready for my job. I was working construction at that time. And my street was loaded with cars. I lived behind um, a big store. I forget the name of it. It's, it's gone, but it's like a, it was like a target of its day. Yeah. And... I lived behind that store, so everybody was parking on the street because the parking lot was full. It was nuts. Apparently, the alarms had been going off. The hurricane was headed towards our island and uh, and tr straight for Kauai. It was going to cross Kauai the tip. Got it. Yeah. It, it was going to cross the tip of our island. So, I called my wife and I said, "Get up, see what's going on." I had the old brick telephone then. I'm like, <laughs> "Get up, see what's going on. There's something happening in the world." I turn on my radio and I'm like, "Oh my God, the the hurricane's headed towards us." And when she got over to this this Target store, whatever it was, it's actually a Target now. Okay. Um, it it uh, people ended up shoving people through the glass windows, <gasps> the plate windows on the front. What? Get trying to get supplies and get ready for things. So oh my gosh. It was insanity. Wow. And it was it was pretty sane. Wow. I had to go. I was working construction. We were working on a big million dollar home down in Lanikai there, and so we had to board up the 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 um, open areas on it. How how long did I give you before? Hours. Hours. I mean, yeah, yeah. Wow. It wasn't like today. Where yeah, they, they we make get way it in advance. Three days, four yeah. days, they're closing yeah. down businesses yeah. to get ready for it. Yeah. It was, uh, it was right in the money. Okay, so, I'm gonna give. So, okay. so Kevin says uh, he wrote it out of Maui, and he said it was also in chats. And then he said Hurricane Nikki hit landfall in Hawaii on September 11th. Ah, there we go. Well, because yeah. obviously we remember this. Uh, but I will tell you guys. <laughs> okay, but get this, you guys. Those of you who love West Hawaii, um, that when the Nikki <laughs> hit Maui and Oahu and horribly. Kauai. Kauai. It did sideswipe Hawaii Island a little bit. It did. Uh -huh. uh, and that's the reason why the pool in front of uh, the Kona Inn 
got messed up forever. That whole part of the, of the it came in and they messed up that part of the building and forever. It, I mean, it's still not fixed. Um, but um, we did not hardly feel that beyond that. I mean, there was like something happened here, but we did not get the massive. Uh, we didn't get the hurricane. The we hurricane. just got some, we got the the strands, the outer strands. Right, because they said yeah. basically it kind of like um it came in and it, it kind of double shotted back. So that something happened where it went like boom, boom, and that's when it really kind of got us. And they've had a couple of hurricanes where they oh, sometimes will say the track is this way, but yeah. if you remember in Nikki, sometimes yeah. it dumps yeah. backwards. Yeah. So, but for the most part, you guys, seriously, one of the reasons Eric and I decided to buy property in West Hawaii is we look at the Hulihi Palace that's been standing there since 1892 and figured if Kamehameha chose Kona and that palace is still standing there, there's a good chance that's going to be okay against hurricanes. Never in recorded history has Kona ever been hit with a hurricane. Yeah. So, so it's in put that on your reason. little safety little It's the little two thing. mountains that are here. Yep, yep. Uh, our uh, our, our, um, our yeah. volcanoes, uh, they have shown. Uh, yeah. And it's funny because when Eric and I first got here, they didn't have the uh, mapping capability to show what the hell's going really on. Mm -hmm. Those uh, uh, mountains basically deflect just by their sheer size. Yeah. Yeah. It deflects the um, the storms that might come over here and hurt us. Yeah. So, but when people say, talk about Hilo, I'm like, I'll be careful because that's not the case in East Hawaii. So. Right. And that's something to be careful. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's an area. It, it's a geographical, geog geography. You Ge know. Uh, geographical. Geographical, thank you. <laughs> I'm obviously not one of those people either. Yeah. <laughs> but, so know. thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah. Okay, so. All right, we're going to talk about real on? estate. Here's like this. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> so number of homes sold. We are starting to pick it up a little bit. Okay. Now the pace is picking up. So. Okay, okay. So there was 45 homes sold last year at this time. Mm -hmm. There was 39 sold this year. Oh. So that puts us at 13% off. Remember, we were running 45% off, off. Yeah. six months ago. Yeah. We're 13% off now. So no. the numbers. And 45 was still a good month. It's not like we're comparing it. It's going to be all weird because we're going to be doubling up on some of these right. Um, right. changes and, you know, and challenges. I'll tell you ahead. again. Uh, Lance said um, in 2018, um, when we were looking at the statistics from 2018 and 2019, you, you would always say, now keep in mind, that there was a massive lava <laughs> flow that's going to mess up these statistics for at least yeah. another four months. So in 2022, they're calling that the unicorn market. Right? Yes, yeah. Because yeah, that's exactly. when the interest rates were still really low. We yeah. had way too much stuff going on. So I'm hearing from my sources on the national market that this is the most balanced market we've had in three years. Yes, absolutely. I will agree with that 100,000%. It's the most balanced. We're back to a normal market. Mm -hmm, right. Um, we're back to a market that probably could sustain 800 realtors. And we got um, 900 and probably, probably sustain really better 750 to 800. So we've got 900 realtors in our area. I don't know how many extra they've got over on the other side. But um, so everybody's feeling a crunch. Even experienced agents have, mm -hmm. are losing these deals to these one-time sales. And uh, so it's a crunch. It's a tight time for, for, for realtors all around. Yeah, because there's just not a lot of houses to sell. Yeah, 39 homes sold here. Yeah. 900 realtors and 39 homes sold. And let's jump down to condos. 37 condos sold and four, uh, I'm sorry, 11, uh, 11 pieces of land. Okay, so um, how so, many condos? 34? 37 versus 35 last okay, year. Okay, so a few less. Yeah. 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 And now, just I'm, I'm always so we're balancing out with questions we're, we're coming here. Up. Um, do you think that's because there's less inventory, or there's less buyers going after these overpriced condos? There is. Well, you know, with it being off, because remember our listings are off. So listings last year in 2022 mm -hmm. on condos, there was um, 78 new listings. There was 69 new listings this year. Okay. Well, Again, that, it's getting close. It's we're getting we're, we're okay, catching we're up some. Okay. So, and uh, for homes, that number in 22 was 341 new homes active in 240 uh, this year. So almost a third less in homes and only, what do we say, 13% difference yeah. in the amount sold. So, um, so it's really becoming balanced, and we're going to talk about, um, so you guys, we had a printing concern, so this came in at last minute. It's a little unorganized, but I'm going to jump over to the, because we like to talk about absorption rate. So absorption rate for condos on the Big Islands at 53%, and residentials at 31%. 
So um, I know a lot of you tuned off and we got a lot of new people in here. So just real quick, 15% and lower is a buyer's market. 20% and higher is a seller's market. So we're sitting at 53% on homes and 31 on condos. How far so have we been in the, at the height? We, at the height, we got up to 98, 99 Yeah, that's when like there was ridiculous. 14 offers on every single piece of property. Yeah. And people were going $100,000 over, which is not a balanced market. No. Uh, where I think now... And remember it's, in like 2019, we, we again, we had 18 was a nightmare. Um... 19 we were running about 21 percent absorption rate i yeah. think yeah. so uh it was just barely into a a, a seller's market you know yeah. it wasn't yeah. too far in yeah um but they did have the advantage and to see it jump up in 21 and 22 to the 90s was insane yeah, yeah. i'll tell you I, I i've run into quite a few people now it, it's just remember when you would hear someone say when you go well, when did you buy your house and if they said 2005 or 20, 2006 you would go oh, you got screwed <laughs> <laughs> now if someone tells you they bought their condo or home in 2017 18 or maybe even 19 you're like, oh, dude you were on fire yeah. your equity yeah. is so good right yeah. now yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of I should have, would have, could have right there. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, but now with the balancing of the market, um, do you actually have in any of those numbers, what is the list price versus the sales price? Like in terms of um, how much were people asking? You know, I was able to run it? that really quickly. I'm sorry, only on residents. I didn't okay. run it on condos. Okay. And we are looking at um sale price to original list price is at uh 97 percent median 95 mm -hmm. percent average okay. the highest was 128 percent and the lowest was 49 percent oh that was huge so i bought it for half of what it was listed for wow so that I'm kind of that. Yeah, 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 that screwed it so, up okay yeah um speaking of stats uh did you see any interesting outliers that you wanted to talk about are we going crazy in land sales are we like dying no. on land sales um are no i didn't no? Uh, nothing really jumped out at me okay i looked at the um gosh i did not run down the i did last month i did i did break down the last several years of cash sales mm -hmm. and they were in the 35 percent range of it and i think the main lens at about 30 percent oh okay and there's about that many people that actually own their homes outright oh which coincides with the number of people paying cash. Oh, well, there you go. You know, That's right. In yeah. another 30 So we're not seeing percent. a bunch of cash people coming into the market. No, a third, of, a third of them, just over a third of our buyers are cash. Okay, well, that so means two-thirds are having a mortgage. Right. Okay, Correct. so the mortgage market is not falling Which way, apart. Which is half full or half in empty? In fact, <laughs> you guys, um, I was at a meeting today, and uh, one of the sponsors was a mortgage company. Uh -huh. And uh, did you come today at all? No, I was on my way to Hilo. Okay. I was in Hilo today. Okay, well, today was kind of an interesting experience. So a mortgage lady was asked, after she went through all the different programs that she offers, it was great. Uh -huh. um, someone yelled at, tell us the rates! And she's like, oh... And very calm, very calm. She's like, well, they're probably going to raise the interest rates again today. And she said, so we're going to probably be looking at about a 7.5 and probably to 8. And it was like, oh, <laughs> and, and everyone was like, oh, what? And uh, she's like, oh, you know, it's, it's not much difference than it already has been. I'm like, oh, what, 15 years ago? <laughs> so, but then according to my, my Altos research guy, he uh -huh. basically said the buyers now know what the interest rates are. And that they're dealing with it, and yeah. they're buying it anyway. Yeah. And so um, I think that it was kind of shocking when they went from two to five to seven, like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And now people are like this, and that's why it's a balanced market. The speculators are out. Mm -hmm. The investors are not making a bunch of money. They're kind of sitting out of it. And the buyers who are saying, you know what, I will get into a home now, and then if they drop down, I'll get, I'll refinance the, the mortgage. And so yeah. it's kind of like, oh, okay. And that stops a lot of this. Let's just throw a bunch of money at real estate. Yes. Yeah, right. and hopefully it gets affordable housing for people. Uh, it is interesting. I think we talked about this last month. We're sitting down with the um, uh, what, the guy in charge of the wastewater um, mm. in, uh, here on the Big Island, and a uh, very uh, spirited conversation that was, uh, I appreciate him. He had a good sense of humor, good guy. And uh, when we got talking, he says, so you guys are realtors? What's what's a medium home? What's a median home? I mean, what's an affordable home for somebody? And you know, we're like nine eighty five. Yeah, I mean, he goes no, but what's affordable, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he kept asking us, grinding us, and it's funny because um, 
I, I love it. Marissa Ashley, a good realtor here in the, in the islands, uh, spoke up and said, well, you would take, uh, you know, the average uh, pay if you're making $60,000 a year. You know, what you can uh, afford on that would be the median payment, and that should be able to buy you a median house in Hawaii. Yeah, and that won't even, happening. you can't even afford rent no. on that. No. So, um, but I so get we this. need to see that. So get this, if you guys, and again, I, I don't know who watched, uh, this is not, I don't think this is actually for, for sale housing, though. Um, mm -hmm. Was Hawaii Today did a story today on affordable rentals that are being purchased and opened up in uh, Waikolo Village. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are looking for a place to live, if you were trying to come here for a little bit just to kind of get a flavor for it, um, Waikolo Village might be a good place to see because they are building out there. Right, they're building yeah. a whole bunch of condos very quickly um, to try and like capture um, the fact that we There's need a ton more. of workforce people out there, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm hoping that the people that work there or that move there for the affordable um, rents it opens up for the people that work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it'll move, yeah. move housing. Along. It, yeah, it'll shift. Yeah, it'll shift. Uh, it'll yeah. shift where people are living. Yeah, because obviously, as you guys know. Up in Waikoloa Village is near all the resorts, and the resorts are crying right now for help. Mm -hmm. And so by at least providing housing, because that's what Waikoloa Village was supposed to have been built for, was workforce housing. And then the prices up there went like $900 to a million. It's a ripple dollars. effect, you know. It got yeah. so expensive in Kona, it just pushed out to South Kona and Waikoloa. Yep. And then the prices went and up. And then to Ocean View and, yeah. uh, and all around. So yeah. we had a ton of workforce housing. They're living 50 minutes to an hour out of town each way yeah. and it's a one lane windy road yeah. that if something happens you're stopped for hours right, right. but it, they're building more housing which is always good yeah. and also i do believe and i heard my friend scott Wynn, who's our mortgage partner on this one he did a um uh he did a um, a little chatty chat with uh, joe egan and um he it was a really good um oh cool like a, a really good rate um forecast trend report and um for all of my friends here um we have it all we have to do is transfer it to our youtube page so you guys go and listen to it yeah i want to watch it for, i missed it for finance wonks it's excellent there's a couple key pieces in there that he makes and it's one of them is the fact that um with the fed raise it, did they raise the rate yeah. i've been on the road i saw yeah. guys i've been on the road all yeah. day long so that's two that's two mortgage people people who say there's a raising the rates and they are pushing us into inflation area well, pushing us into um recession so when we are in recession right mm -hmm. um you then, mean like the one we were in last year? Right. No, we're still okay. going to be making more of it yeah. because now they're going to go to you know higher yeah. rates. But um, when that happens, obviously the frenzy starts dissipating. Mm -hmm. So people actually have a shot at doing the things like buying houses where they're not fighting. And also, what happens then is sometimes the prices get softened, right? Uh -huh. right. So that could be some for our friends out here who are figuring out what am I doing here. Uh, maybe there's maybe there's some hope for some softening. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I also have some people on this group that say, I just bought a house. Please don't tell me the prices are softening. I just bought a house. But you're in. So that's the case, right? That once you're in, at least you're in. But I did have a guy today that I actually have a listing, you guys. And he walked in and he said, I've been sitting on the fence for a year and a half, mm -hmm. waiting for something big to happen. And it never showed up. Mm -hmm. So now I need to buy a house. So there's that too. So the longer you wait, sometimes things like slip by you. So you know. I've got that one chart I forgot to pull up. Which is so, and I'm sorry, I just pulled up here, you guys. I just looked at they're saying a thirty year <gasps> fixed loan. Is seven point seven eight. Seven point seven eight. And wow. I don't mean to say this to rub it in, you know, I just it's horrible and I and I hate seeing it and we've talked about this for years. You can't just keep waiting and waiting and waiting for for the world to change. And now we it's gotten to, more yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah we have to jump seven, in and seven, do eight, something. You guys. Um, as my mortgage friends would mm, say, though, sorry. 778 doesn't apply to every single person because it, right. depends, it depends on the property and the person and their credit score. Exactly. So, yeah. Thank you for that yeah. reminder. Um, also, um, when do um, I have that? Once uh, inflation it. It gets a, when they wrangle inflation down, um, they're expecting the mortgage rates to go down a little bit. But if you're waiting for that, you're not living in Hawaii. True. Yeah. So, do you guys want to move on and talk a little bit about TAR? TAR. TAR. TAR it is. Let's, okay. Let's, so that's the let transit, that Keep accommodations, rental. rental. And that used to be called STVR, which is short-term vacation rental. Now it's TAR. And uh, while he's getting his act together over here, yeah. um, the Association of Realtors created a website. It's called... Um, 
I'm going to go to one that the, the Association of Realtors, they are, more, okay, so this is where i got to make my disclaimer, because this statement's coming from Lance Owens. Oh, okay, not, that, not, not, not an organized real estate. No organization stands behind what I'm talking about here, and um, the, boy, I'm not getting this lame duck period where I'm immediate past president and, and upcoming uh, I'm just a first vice president. I'm three years away from the state, so I'm nothing, but I'm held to the same high standard. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the 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 it's not nobody's taking a full position on it, but they are. The two board of realtors have got together, and they're working on a position statement okay. on it. Right. And to be clear, they I know that they will be opposing. The bill, mm -hmm. and they're posing it on property rights. Okay, and now so people, just just because of people, okay, this is a transit accommodations rental tax bill that the county has now in their fourth um, fourth draft of this thing, mm -hmm. and it will turn into an ordinance, right? If it passes, if yeah. it passes, and it'll be very very difficult to overturn. Yeah. So that's why we're being very very careful. And if you guys are living here, we might need some testimony. To the council to say how this might impact you. We need you. testimony. It's okay. not might. Yeah. And it will affect all. So it's going to affect. Oh, uh, go ahead. Good. I mean well, I, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to testify because we bought a home that has no HANA. And I heard, and again, help me on this one, mm -hmm. that they might actually go after you. And that's what I've heard that you can't live in the bottom part of your house and rent out the top. Yep. That is such a yep. thing against private property rights. I can't even stand it the one of the reasons we bought this house is that eric and i would be able to travel by having all of our stuff downstairs in the ohana and renting out the top half so that we would have a obviously a home to live in while we're traveling mm -hmm. and that the person on the top basically finance our life from rent i mean is there a lot of people who think that yeah so by doing that that just makes me mad yep. so i'm gonna be providing testimony no, it's and it's horrible again. And so I know that everybody's position. Um, um, my my belief is everybody's intention is on property rights. It has nothing to do with short term rental. Mm -hmm. It's about the government coming into your home and saying, "You can rent that room, but you can't rent that room." Mm -hmm. um, and if you do rent that room for 179 days, um, you have to you have to have oh, off street right. parking. You have to move. You have to, um, you know, put. You have to build parking on your own property to do that. Now, that I mean, that's probably a good idea, anyways. But if I'm renting it 181 days to a family of five and they're all of driving age, they're all allowed to park up and down the street in front of your mailboxes and everything else. So this only applies to the term limit of how you want to rent it. So the government should not be able to tell you that if you rent it for 179 days, you are treated different. Than if you rent it for 181 oh, oh, days. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So this isn't a 30-day rental. This isn't. They've changed transit authority as a rental to um, to uh, 180 days. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a lot of people jumped up and said, "Well, what about traveling nurses? Yeah, and things yeah. like that." And they yeah. said, "Well, they got a waiver for that." Well, oh, okay. So you get a waiver for that. Okay. And you get a waiver for emergency response people. Oh. So so those two things do make sense to have them there. But it's still, when I looked um, the other day, there's several furnished finders or several places for rent yeah. that, that are, you know, that's what nurses, it, it has to be fully furnished and the power and everything also has to be included in the, uh, in the rent okay. because they can't come in for three months and do their thing and go right. get, create an account and everything else. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the, some of the, the, um, what you have to do for that. So, right. um, but I've also heard, just so you guys know, because um, we do, and you know, I've, I've, I've been talking to people. Uh -huh. they, the people who actually watch your show sometimes actually actually own homes here already. So mm -hmm. these aren't people just looking to buy homes, or they already own. Um, and sometimes people think that uh, furnished finders and the, and the the nurse experience is like the bomb diggity mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, oh, it's great. I'm going to get somebody whose basically employer pays above and beyond the cost of most people who what they can afford to rent. And they are like the, 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 the golden cow of I'll put a, a nurse in my rental. Um, I have a property management friend, Kristen Moreland, who's the president of the association. She said that is diminished immensely yeah. in the last like year. Yeah. So if you think that you're just going to throw a nurse in the back of your house and get all the money, it's not happening like that anymore. It's not happening. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so go to informedhawaii.com. Okay. This is not by any board. 
This is by uh, a realtor member that is who has on beautiful her own. graphic skills. Uh, she has created this graph to tell you. I mean, I just love this thing. Um, I'll I'll post a link to it. Yeah, in, yeah. In the thing. So. And it, t it says if you are a homeowner, it tells you. It kind of goes yeah. through the what happens if experience. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. if yes, if you're not warning, this law will limit you to what you're legally able to do with any property in Hawaii that you own in the future. Oh boy. Um, so that's why it's important for you people that, that may be looking at buying here. Right. This is what's right. going to affect the right. future of it. Yep. If you are a homeowner, do you have units that you rent on your property? No, then it'll affect the future. If yes, do you offer to rent for periods more than or less than six months? And so it goes into all these different areas. So you can figure out where you're at on yeah, this Yeah, where do you sit you in the you. slow chart and how it's going to affect you? And then what does it say at the bottom? Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> annual renewal required um mm -hmm. so then if you look she has done such a fantastic um she's got a download of okay, so she's of got the bill means, for the bill the yeah. final bill she's got everything so yeah. informed hawaii.com there you go the fourth draft yeah. um and you know, you know what the realtor said today because hmm. you guys this is how this goes people think well, it doesn't affect me because I'm not doing a short-term vacation rental, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Um, this kind of stuff affects everybody. Yeah. Eventually, it rolls down and will have effect. Yeah. So keep an eye on it. And again, if you guys are considering buying real estate in Hawaii, and to those who are homeowners, really, this mm -hmm. is a big thing. And so um, once they pa again, you guys, once they pass the ordinance, they said basically it's not you can't change that. Stuff. Yeah. So this away. is our chance to actually try to affect legislation and let us our voices be heard. Um, and you guys, you know, it's funny with when Amber and I talk, we're like, la, la, la. when you and I talk, it's like, oh, this is important. <laughs> 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 you need to vote the right way. So uh, yeah. So because obviously uh, Lance is like knee deep in legislation and understands stuff at the state level that is rolling downhill and what's happening with the county, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys get a chance to basically hear it from the horse's mouth when uh, things like this are uh, coming up and and so again and that's kind of I'm gonna jump over to where I talked about the uh, how that report that's the, the numbers are starting from incorrect numbers worries me a lot because mm -hmm. you'll hear these guys verbally refer to these reports they came out with one a uh, while back that mm -hmm. talked about um, outside buyers buying in Hawaii and things like that and it's quoted all the time yeah and uh, and they will be talking about these rental rates and blaming people that rent less than 180 days for the problem. Mm -hmm. Where the problem is um, basically permitting and uh, um, zoning issues that they have. You know, we need duplexes here. Couples need we to make a need, start. I mean, if you could buy duplexes. a duplex and rent one to help pay your mortgage and your other, it would be it would be insanely helpful. Helpful. Yeah, and you're providing uh, rental housing for somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Right. In fact, um, I, Eric and I bought a triplex in Sunnyvale before we bought, ever bought a single family home. And uh, we took one of the units for ourselves and they rented out the other two. Yeah. And it made it so we could afford the house. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what people do. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And uh, thinking about buying a house and then thinking, I'm worried about buying that house because I don't know what the legislation is going to look like in three years. Mm -hmm. That's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you guys just know it's it's yeah. a thing. So if it's you guys are smart enough to have gotten to this point in our video, there you yeah. go. Um, <laughs> there five people left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, is there anything? No, else? we got somebody asking a question. Eric, you have a question? No, we got no, somebody. No, there? no, no. Okay. I'll just be flipping some things on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. People watching though, don't worry. Okay. okay. Uh, we've got uh, John says aloha from Kanaloa. Thank hey, you, John. John Hunker Saker. Hunsaker. 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 He's yeah. been around for a while. Thank yeah. you, John. Um, yeah, because they they want to know what's going on too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're if you're a condo owner. If you're thinking about renting it out, you know. John, um, luckily the condos are safe right now. So with all yeah. the stuff happening, the condos that they gave Are in the vacation to. zone. The condos in the vacation zone. Um, okay. Apparently, from what I understand, I haven't dug in. Again, this draft four is out. Informedhawaii.com. You can read draft four for yourself. And, and I'm not an attorney. Oh, there you go. You and that way you can yeah. see if it affects you, you or not. You can see if it affects you. From, yeah. what I've, from what I understand... Because they've changed it drastically since the beginning when they came out with it. Mm -hmm. um, and until I have time to sit down over the weekend maybe and read through this thing and give you a true... Okay. Well, one um, thing I did hear about today's meeting mm -hmm. was the fact that they dropped this little uh, bombshell in that they hadn't been in the, the prior three drafts uh -huh. about you have to uh, switch over to a septic system if you're going to have a uh, short-term vacation rental in a home. 
So this is, you know, you guys have been talking about septic for a long time, and the, the county has been figuring out, trying to figure out how they can make it happen faster, or mm -hmm. who's going to pay for it. So if you, and again, again this affects me, because not only do we have the Ohana underneath us, we also have a cottage, and we want to rent it out, right? Right. So then, not only do you have to have off-street parking, you actually have to switch over to a septic system, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to make sure the septic system can handle the extra load onto the, and again, you guys, I swear to God, I, I, I love environmentalism. I, I, I want to in the ocean, totally I, want, yeah. I want a clean, want clean, clean water. water. I totally get it. It costs at least twenty thousand dollars to switch over to the septic system. No, so no. Um, that so was that was just FYI. I mean, that was the numbers back in two thousand nineteen. Um, now, 20. how much is this? We're pushing thirty five thousand. Okay, thirty five thousand dollars. In in they're being stricter, and you have to um, cap off the old one. So you have to oh. cut open the old one. Yeah. You have to remove all the waste from it. You have to backfill it with something and then you have to cover it back up what yeah yeah so so uh it's, yeah. it's pushed up to an average price of thirty-five thousand. you'll see me writing stuff from a few years ago a couple of years ago even you know at that twenty twenty five thousand dollar um estimate but that's gone way up wow so so just so you guys can see how regulation yeah. can actually affect prices uh, on hawaii island um uh, so it's interesting because when they talk about the amount of rentals that, that they have in vacation rentals they talk about six thousand something i think being other stvrs on the on the big island um but they don't break it down to how many are the condos that this wouldn't be affected by the septic cesspool yeah let's say we split it in the middle you know say we run three and three so how are they going to do three thousand conversions in the next year well if they do point of sale or by forcing homeowners to have to change their septic to be able to use their house for uh, a vacation when you can physically experience. only do 15 to 20 a month yeah I how is it going yeah. to it's, yeah. it's mathematically impossible well, erica will be out there with shovels going through the, the lava yeah <laughs> so Anybody that wants to go in on a excavating business? I know you guys, seriously, if you're looking for new opportunities, obviously go digging out. Uh, second yeah. mortgage on the house and buy an excavator yeah. and a bunch of plastic If things. nobody hasn't told you yet, Hawaii Island is its own experience over here. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, is there any, like, good news that you want to share with people? <laughs> I know we were talking about the weather to start with. Now we're ending with that very expensive septic system turnover. Uh, but um, I love it here. <laughs> all this, all this, this is education. At the end of the day, I wouldn't leave here. I know. Anyway. Well, you know, I'm going to try to figure out how the heck we're going to be able to pay for that. Because I love this house, and yeah. I love where we're at. So this is how it goes, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, where are you going to put it? If anybody looked at your place, too, how are you going to get a backhoe uh, in here? A backhoe in here, a jackhammer, a backhoe, a track, you know, track you got to be able to haul all this rock out. I know. I mean, it's just, yeah. I think it's, the house is too built up around it. Yep. I don't think it's possible. I think that was done during the excavation of the home. Yeah. When they did it, and right. I think it's, it's virtually Well, in this impossible. neighborhood, almost every single house on this entire neighborhood is sitting with Ohana units. Yeah. Because the way that these houses were built on the hillside. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I don't want to get too in the weeds, guys, because then I'll just get depressed and I'll yeah. just. Yeah. So we do Bye. love it here. It's been uh, in, uh, this weekend was incredible. Fourth of July, it yeah. was sunny all day. Yes, it was. I, it was. Um, it was. I was uh, pleasantly surprised because you know in Coloco, I give you guys a hard time over in East Hawaii. You know I rub it in, but in all reality. I get rain every evening because of the elevation I'm at. Yeah, and you guys, uh, if okay, so also yesterday we were working with Amber, and I was okay, <laughs> I, I, I got I got beaten <laughs> by somebody. Okay, I'm not gonna say beaten. I was chastised. No, probably just admonished uh, about how <laughs> I seem to like not always have the nicest things to say about East Hawaii. And you know, it's not that. It's just you know, and you guys aren't just you know, half of me is just joking. Seriously, right. I love I, I you know what, I love this whole island, so I, I I joke a lot. But um, at this time yesterday, when Amber was sitting here. It was raining behind me, uh -huh. and it's raining today behind uh -huh. me uh -huh. because we get a lot of rain in West Hawaii too. So we can't be like I said, like right. we said, we can't be right. beating up East Hawaii. Yeah, we can't we all live on a tropical <laughs> island that gets rain, so it's. I, I, I'll tell you, I was in Hilo today and I saw the sunshine for about thirty minutes. So I know what happens there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I'll tell you guys, I, I don't think I had an appreciation for rain and clouds until I lived in Keahoe and I was baking every day. Yeah. And being up here it is more temperate. Look, I'm, wearing, I'm basically wearing a jacket yeah. and it's July. So there you go. So get your get your yeah. elevation on, guys. I love it. It was a beautiful ride. It was we were at an oceanfront showing in Hilo, and it was it was it was amazing. The waves were rolling in. Mm -hmm. The jungle look, you know, to the place. Uh, it was sunny. 
um, when we did the showing, yeah. it was um, it was it was beautiful. And you get my ocean front over there for a million dollars. Ocean yeah. front. Ocean front, like right ocean on the ocean. Dead ocean front. Half acre parcel. Let's talk about those hurricanes. <laughs> um, and uh, so it was, yeah. Yeah. Was nice. I enjoyed yeah. it. You know, a sunny day on Hilo is absolutely, it is beautiful. They've got those beautiful parks. It was just there during the sh just show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Hilo <laughs> Bay is gorgeous. I, I um, hit the middle of Saddle Road and boom, man, on come the wipers. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, coming yeah. down. Well, I mean, okay, let's, let's talk about the positive aspect of it, at least for not a terrible drought. Right. Right. So it's, right. It's, it's a good day to be in right. Hawaii. So, okay, I so know, Eric's I've been trying to say something good, and I keep ruining it because <laughs> I go off with a joke at the end. Uh, no, it it's good. It's truly good. truly yeah. a gorgeous day over there, no matter what it was. And yeah. I came home, and I uh, got to my house, and it was raining in Kona at my house. Not hard. It was raining. There you go. Uh, you know what? Seriously, guys, if you're going to live at Elevation in Hawaii, you got it until 10 o'clock in the morning with clear skies. Yeah. And then the, the, the rain probably sets in around 11 o'clock. Yeah. Now, get this. Also, this is July. This is normally the rainy season. Yeah. So that's just how it goes. So I, I mean, we tell everybody that comes over to ride, you don't don't show up at noon. It's going to be raining by it's then. It's going to be raining. You need to be there at 9 o'clock is the optimal time to yeah. come over and ride. And, and most days we can get in until noon or 1, you know, before. And yeah. 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 But I've been selling a house that's at 1300 elevation uh -huh. and every time i show up if we haven't done the photography by 10 30 it's great yeah yeah but then you know what the cool thing is guys though is that at, the sun comes through the cloud cover and still provides an amazing incredible sunset just about every yeah. single day in west hawaii and you can never ever say the kona sunsets aren't the best thing that ever happened on this whole island because it is spectacular so I have a friend that just sent me, she's visiting, and she said, I don't think you guys realize how lucky you are every day that you can go into the water in the ocean and swim around in very, very warm water and it's clear and the sun can set around you. And even if the rain is in the distance, it is creates a magnificent, beautiful experience. And that's why yeah. we live here. Yeah. Okay. And those wanting to live in the 10, 10, 10, I'm working on a listing. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to okay. be my neighbor. Oh, something up in Coloco? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if yeah. you like some rain. Yeah. <laughs> and it rains. So, uh, yeah. It rains like Hilo yeah. up there. So if you <laughs> are on my YouTube, I mean, my, my Facebook uh, page, which is the 365 Kona's I'm Moving to Hawaii and Buying a House uh, Facebook page, uh, we do put uh, listings mm -hmm. that uh, come out from our uh, real estate group so that way you can see what's on the market from our people. Um, you can also uh, contact Lance directly if you want to like, learn about upcoming listings. We can also tell you some stuff. Uh, but if you're over on YouTube, you're missing the fun because you're not being live. Um, if you want to be part of the live audience and you are not yet working with a realtor, uh, join the 365 Ohana, which you can find at 365hawaiiliving.com. And you get some free resources, some moving guides, and a book. And you also get a chance to be on an email list and you'll get a chance to hear more about the kind of things that we're doing. We also post these videos after they're completed. And that way you can always make sure that you get the latest and the coolest thing, even if you can't make it at 4 o'clock on Wednesdays. And what do you do for a living? We sell real estate. What do I do for a living? You sell real estate. Okay, we sell real estate. <laughs> if you're watching our show, give us a call. That's right. We sell right. real estate. Eric, what do you do? I sell real estate. You sell real estate too. Okay, thank you. I just want to make that, sure everybody sure. knows. Yep, we all sell real estate. Mm -hmm. We so, should start um, the show with that one. That we should, yeah. uh, because that's what's paying for you guys to get this great information. So, again, Lance Owens, Louva Real Estate. And Julian Eric Zimalis, uh, KW Hawaii. And if you guys have more questions about uh, what's happening with the market, please drop them in the comments below and we will take care of that. So with that, we Thank say you. Aloha. Aloha.